Hydroelectric dams are one of the cheapest and oldest methods of producing energy, and many organizations present dams as a clean source of power. As a result, there are thousands of dams built worldwide. In the United States alone, there are nearly 100,000 dams. However, the last 20 years of research has found that dams may not be as green as we originally thought. It has been found that dams have a much larger environmental impact than previously considered by causing significant degradation to river ecosystems. This is through restricting the movement of organisms, preventing natural nutrient and sediment flow, significantly altering habitats, and producing greenhouse gases. With some of these issues in mind, many are now reflecting on the benefits of restoring rivers to their pre-dammed states. What I'll be focusing on today is the emission of greenhouse gases from dams, specifically focused on the Huron River watershed and the Peninsular Dam. This figure represents one major issue with damming. As water flows to the impoundment, eroded sediments from upstream are deposited in front of the dam. Organic matter is also deposited. Another issue is from the slow water caused by dams. Slow water prevents reoxygenation and also causes warmer temperatures. With these issues in mind, damming rivers can create an environment which is uniquely suited for greenhouse gas production. The organic matter and slow water flow behind dams helps fuel decomposition, which consumes oxygen. This creates anoxic zones in rivers. Now, microorganisms would typically prefer aerobic respiration, but behind dams, organisms will prefer methanogenesis, where they produce methane instead of carbon dioxide. The big issue with methane is that it's a potent greenhouse gas with a higher warming potential in comparison to CO2. Methane can trap around 30 times more heat in comparison to carbon dioxide. This means that every one molecule of methane would be the same as 30 molecules of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Even though CO2 is more abundant, for each molecule of methane, there is a much larger impact on global temperatures. Emissions from impoundments are becoming a big concern as methane concentrations in the atmosphere are continuing to increase. There are several different ways that methane can be released into the atmosphere. The first way methane can be released is through plant vascular tissue. Stems and plant tissue allow for methane to pass from the sediments to the atmosphere. Diffusion is another process where dissolved gas from deep water transfers to shallow waters. Eventually, this gas is transferred into the atmosphere. Next, ebullition is the process of methane bubbling to the surface. This process is unique to locations where methane production is extremely hot. Finally, degassing occurs when water flows through the dam and exits the other side. The rapid moving water helps release the methane into the atmosphere. So, to sample methane, there are three things that can be measured. Diffusion, ebullition, and dissolved methane. Many studies in the past aim to calculate the total methane production, but only use dissolved methane sampling. This misses potentially large concentrations of methane from bubbling. As a result, Using only dissolved CH4 likely resulted in much lower estimates of methane from impoundments, which decreases the apparent effect on greenhouse gas emissions. To combat this issue, the methodology needs to reflect both ebullition and diffusion when performing emission measurements. Bubbling and diffusion is likely the best total estimate of methane emissions from dams. To sample for both, static floating chambers are deployed at the site and anchored to the ground. Many other studies use methods that are fairly complex and expensive. To get the most data with cost-effective supplies, I plan on using simple materials like small plastic containers, pool noodles, rope, and stakes. While these containers are similar to methods from other researchers, this will offer a new sampling method that is more accessible. These devices will be left out for two hours of sampling, which will likely give accurate samples at specific times throughout the day. Here is an early prototype of the static floating chamber, which measures both ebullition and diffusion. While this device is quite small, it allows for cheap sampling with many replicates. The container was prepped by drilling a small hole at the top, which was plugged with a stopper to prevent any of the sample gas from leaking. Two holes were also drilled at the bottom of the container to attach ropes. The ropes on both sides of the device were then staked into the ground. Next, to measure just the ebullition flux, small funnels would be submerged without a headspace of air. The funnels will be plugged with a stopper, which will allow bubbling methane to be captured in the neck of the device. These funnels will be staked to the sediments and left overnight. These funnels will also need to be left out for longer to allow more gas collection. Bubbling is typically highly variable, and it may take much longer to collect adequate samples. Here is another early device for sampling. 
This is the evolution funnel and it has two small holes in the lip which allowed for stakes to hold it down. Using fishing line, a bobber was also attached so the device could be found easily. This device also has a stopper to prevent gas from leaking. Future funnels will likely be much larger with taller necks to cover a wider area. These devices will be used to gain insight on the superior and peninsular dams. For both impoundments, the static floating chambers and funnels will be deployed above and below the dam. The blue dots indicate approximately where the samples will be taken. While this research will be helpful in understanding the effect dams have on methane emissions, the peninsular dam in Ypsilanti is of particular interest. This dam is in the beginning stages of removal. Most dam studies do not take adequate samples before removal to compare to the conditions after the river is restored. For the Peninsular Dam, this offers a unique opportunity to sample the river now for greenhouse gases and compare to the conditions following removal. With many of the issues of damming, a restored river could offer many benefits to the ecosystem as well as recreational benefits to the area. Removing old dams from the Huron River will increase habitat connectivity, restore natural water flow, and increase nutrient loads downstream. Hopefully, the removal of the dam will also decrease methane emissions.